Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the Fjall Raven School Top 26 Liter Backpack. In the past, we looked at the 28 liter version of this bag. I did a comparison of it with Fjall Raven's Raven 28, which is one of my favorite all purpose bags. I really enjoyed using the 28 liter version of this bag. It had a little bit of a different layout, still a pretty kind of technical and outdoorsy feeling bag. This one has a little bit more of a heritage style aesthetic. It's got that rucksack style top loading layout. And you know, a few people have been asking about this, so I was curious to check it out. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what it's been like to use this over the past couple of weeks. I'll show you how I've loaded it out, walk through all the features, and I'll also talk about how it compares to some of the other similar bags that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny, and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the overall aesthetic, to me the bag has a pretty technical and outdoorsy vibe. So it's got compression straps, attachment points, it's not a super minimal bag, but I think that this works well for its intended use cases. This feels like a bag that's gonna be right at home in the outdoors for going on hikes, but it's also versatile enough that it's still gonna work well for exploring a city and traveling. As far as the materials, the bag feels pretty solidly built. This exterior fabric is a recycled 600D polyester that feels like it's gonna hold up well to rougher usage while providing a nice amount of weather resistance and helping to keep the weight of the bag down. And beyond that, you have you know, really durable feeling buckles and straps all throughout. And although there's not a ton of zippers on the bag, the ones that are included are very smooth working YKK zippers. Continuing along the outside of the bag, I was happy to see that you have two external water bottle pockets, one on each side. These offer a pretty good amount of space and elasticity. I was able to hold my 26 ounce Yeti Rambler pretty comfortably. You can see that there's still some space if you have a thicker water bottle that you wanna hold, but the compartments feel a little bit shallow to me, so I could see this sort of sliding out. It's not the tightest fit, uh, so that's something that you wanna keep in mind, but I do like that they expand outwards. And then above the water bottle pockets, you also have some compression straps that you can pair with a tripod if you wanna store it in here, something a little bit taller. These can also be used to compress the bag down when it's not quite as full. And so you have one of those on each side. And then along the front of the bag, you have this bungee cord that's gonna be a good spot for holding larger, bulkier items that you don't wanna place on the inside or that you're grabbing more regularly. So I will typically use this maybe for a jacket, for an extra pair of shoes or flip flops. Uh, so always nice to have this, it provides a nice amount of flexibility. And then at the top of the bag, you have you know pretty simple handle just to pick the bag up or hang it when it's not in use, nothing crazy here. And then you have the red Fjall Raven logo on the front. And then one last thing to call out while we're talking about the exterior is that the bag does not stand up well on its own. It's got a little bit of a slant at the bottom. So when you place it down, it'll definitely tip forward. So you have to lean this against something else like you have to do with the Raven 28. Moving into the capacity, the bag comes in at about 26 liters, which is a really versatile size in my opinion. I'm able to hold all the items that I normally like to carry with me and there's still some leftover space for longer days and hikes or if I'm using this for minimal travel. And then I like that even when the bag is a little bit more packed out because of its more flexible nature, it never feels overwhelmingly bulky and it seems like it's gonna be great for navigating crowded areas, jumping onto public transit and taking on to pretty much any domestic or international airline. Taking a look at the harness system, so far the bag has been really comfortable to wear. I like how the straps have been implemented here. They have a nice amount of padding that's really soft, cushioned right out of the box. On the inside, you have a breathable mesh to help prevent moisture from building up. And then the straps have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's a little bit more packed out. Beyond that, you have a couple of loops here that are gonna allow you to maybe clip on additional accessories, hang your sunglasses. They seem to have a little bit of a reflective accent there. And then you have an adjustable and removable sternum strap to help distribute the weight. And as far as the back paneling, this has also been really comfortable. Same type of padding that you saw on the straps, well distributed all throughout. I really like the breathability. Again, that's provided by the mesh. You don't have a you know large air channel here per se. You do have small ones here to provide a little bit of ventilation while you're walking around. But generally, I would have preferred to see something a little deeper to just give you a little bit more airflow. Regardless, this has felt pretty comfortable. And then you also have at the bottom an included waist strap 
I hesitate to call it a waist belt. It really is just a very thin strap that you can remove if you don't want to use it. Uh, but this could be helpful for stabilizing the pack if you're using this for hiking. So I know some people like them. I'll typically take it off so it's nice that it's not something that I have to tuck away anywhere and that it's included with the bag. Jumping into the organizational options, the bag keeps things really simple. You just have one quick access pocket on the lid. So you have this nice zipper that's protected under the flap here. And you have a pretty spacious pocket here, even for bulkier items, which I really like. So you'll easily be able to reach down and grab things like sunglasses. That's what I have here. I have my GoPro. I also have a little USB hub for my laptop. It's a little bit bulkier, so I just wanted to show the space. And even with those items in there, there was still some leftover capacity. So it'd be a good spot for pouches, maybe some gloves, other items that you're using either while hiking or traveling. Beyond that, no other internal organization. And then moving into the main compartment, this is a top loading bag. You do have the adjustable straps. That's one of the cool things about this type of bag. So you can expand the volume a little bit, or you can even place something like a jacket on the flap to hold it in place. You can also tighten it down when it's not quite as full to just give it a smaller form factor. So that's what I generally like about these styles of bag. They also you know, seem to provide a good amount of weather resistance and durability as long as you have everything tucked under that top flap. You have this drawstring closure here to help you do so. So again, you have a little bit more space if you are carrying extra stuff. And I like this system here. You can easily just pull this up to open it. And then you just have a really large main area. One thing to note about this bag is that sometimes these heritage style backpacks will have a zipper on the side to allow you to access stuff from the main area. This is not one of those bags. So you have to open it up completely when you want to access this larger compartment. And it is a spacious compartment. Again, 26 liters. I was really able to put a ton of stuff in there and you can see that there's a leftover space at the top. Diving in, I have a packable rain jacket. I have my Beat Studio wireless headphones. Then I have my DJI Mavic Mini with a hard case. I have the Alpaca Admin pouch that I typically have with me. And then at the bottom, I have the Evergood Civic Access pouch, one liter. And I also have the two liter, just to kind of showcase all the different stuff that can fit into that main area due to the simpler layout. And now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. It's pretty deep, so if you have stuff that's falling towards the bottom, it could be a little bit tricky to see it and grab it. But with the amount of space that's offered here, I could also easily use this for minimal travel. If I wanted to toss in a packing cube, my dot kit, an extra pair of shoes, I would easily be able to use this for a longer weekend trip. In this main compartment, you do have one additional smaller zippered pocket which is kind of floating near the top. I hadn't seen this too much in other bags. I thought this was a pretty cool idea to be able to easily reach some of the smaller items that might get lost in this big open space. At the moment, I'm just using this to hold a lightning cable and my AirPods so that they're not too hard to grab. And so that's pretty interesting here. It just stays out of the way as well if you don't want to use it. And then on the back of the compartment, you have a padded sleeve that is meant to hold a 15 or 16 inch laptop. Currently what I have here is a 13 inch MacBook Air. You can see there's plenty of leftover space here at the top and the sleeve itself is a little padded. So it's not just a simple slip pocket. It's not the most rigid sleeve, but it does offer some protection. It feels like there's a little bit of protection at the bottom as well. It's got maybe a slight false bottom, but because the bag is not that rigid and sometimes felt the laptop hitting the bottom. Regardless, it does feel like there's some protection. And so pulling my device out, now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. No fleece lining on either side, but it does come up a decent amount. So if you happen to have a thicker device, you should be able to fit in there comfortably. And then this is also meant to be paired with a hydration bladder. There doesn't seem to be any sort of a pass through for the nozzle to come out, but you do have this clip and strap at the top to kind of help manage that. Uh, so this is not typically what I would use it for, but this is an outdoor focus bag. So kind of makes sense that the uh, sleeve here is meant to play double duty. So, you know, just really simple layout in general, which I think works well for the style of the bag that this is. It's gonna be able to hold a ton of stuff. And if you're looking for, you know, just a simple outdoorsy bag that's gonna have a rucksack style vibe and provide some good comfort, and this is gonna be a solid option to take a look at. And so to wrap up, it's been a pretty good experience testing out the school top 26 liter backpack over the past couple of weeks. 
You can currently purchase this on the company site or Amazon for around $120, which to me feels like a pretty reasonable price considering the features and the build quality that it has to offer. And it's also gonna compare well to some of the other similar bags in this price range. And so as I was testing this out, this definitely reminded me of some of the other great bags in Fjall Raven's lineup. As I mentioned earlier in the video, we've looked at the 28 liter version of this bag in the past, as well as their Alvo line of bags. But to me, if I had to recommend one of Fjall Raven's backpacks, it still continues to be the Raven 28, which I think is their most versatile option. I really love the aesthetic that it has. It's got kind of a nice heritage style vibe. The G1000 fabric feels very rugged. You can wax it to just increase its longevity over the long period of time. It's got an improved and comfortable harness system now, so it's a little bit more breathable in the back panel. I really like the organizational layout of that bag. It's just gonna provide the most flexibility as far as pocketing. It's got a dedicated and well-padded laptop compartment. So, you know, just really checks off a lot of the boxes for what I'm typically looking for. It's not gonna be as technical or outdoor focused as this one, but if you want a bag that can do it all at a reasonable price range, that's gonna be one of the best options to take a look at. Another bag this made me think of is the North Face Borealis, which like this one has a little bit more of a technical and outdoorsy vibe. It's got the bungee cord on the front to allow you to lash on additional accessories. It's got nice dual external water bottle pockets, good amount of space. It comes in at around 28 liters, so pretty similar capacity to this. It's got a more traditional top loading layout similar to School 28, uh, but it can hold an impressive amount of stuff. The harness system on the Borealis is gonna be a little bit more robust and supportive. In my opinion, the bag is also gonna be maybe a little heavier, but generally very comfortable to wear. I really like the laptop compartment on that one. And so if you're looking for something kind of like this that you know can be used on a hike, but that can work for a variety of different purposes, it's gonna give you just a little bit more organization. And that's gonna be an excellent option to take a look at. And then the last option that I'll mention here, if you have a little bit of a higher budget, is the GORUCK M23, which like this one has a top loading rucksack style layout. I really like the aesthetic and the flexibility that that provides. It's a big change from many of GORUCK's previous bags, but so far I've really enjoyed using it. It's got a nice organizational layout that provides you access to all of your essentials. You can access the main area of the bag as well without opening up that top compartment very comfortable harness system. You have a dedicated laptop compartment, nice ripstop nylon that has held up well so far. That one comes in two different sizes also. So if you need a little bit more capacity uh, or if you want something smaller, I use the 21 liter size. That one really can hold an impressive amount without feeling overwhelmingly big, but just really like the flexibility that those provide. Uh, similar aesthetic, and so if you're a fan of GORUCK's bags, if you're looking for something that's gonna be maybe a little bit more rugged or provide some extra organization, then that's gonna be a fantastic option to consider. With that being said, the School Top 26 liter backpack holds up pretty well against all those options, and if you're looking for something that's gonna offer a nice amount of flexibility, space, and comfort, that's also gonna come in at under $150, and it's gonna be a pretty solid option to take a look at. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you all think of the School 26 liter backpack and how it compares to some of the other popular outdoor and EDC bags that are currently on the market. And if there's any similar options that you think that I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank you for watching and supporting the channel and for continuing to give great suggestions in the comments. This is one of those bags that I you know, was turned onto because people were asking about it. So keep those coming. I'm always you know, kind of making a list of the bags that I'm hearing about. And if you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.